In today's video, we're gonna show you how to lower your G20 BMW the cheapest and easiest way. Hey, this is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. As you can see behind me, we have Edwin's M340i G20, and today we're gonna show you how to lower it on H&R Sport Lowering Springs. Now, whenever you lower your car, it's a really good idea to measure before and after to see the change. But the other thing I do wanna note is it does take a little while for springs to settle down. So even though I'm gonna show you what we get before and then what we get after, after driving on the car for a week or two, it's gonna settle a little bit more. So keep that in mind as you're watching today's video because if it doesn't go quite low enough for what you're looking for, make sure you remember it's gonna settle a little bit more. All right, so for our measurement, we're gonna measure from the center of the center cap. Up here, we are at 15 and three quarter inches. So we're gonna write that down and then let's head to the back and see what we're at at the back. All right, and then in the back, we are at 15 inches. So keep those numbers in mind as we lower the car and then at the end of the video, we're gonna show you how much drop we actually got. Now for this process, we will be doing it on a lift and that's mainly so you can see what's going on at all angles. You do not need to do this on a lift. We've done it actually more times on the ground with a jack and jack stands that we have on our actual lift. Um, the other thing to note is you will need a couple specialty tools to do this job, which we're going to link all of down in the description below. So with that, let's pop the hood. We'll get the car off the ground, take the wheels off and get started. Okay, so for this process, we're gonna start in the rear. The first thing you need to do is you need to lower this cover right here. So get a 10 millimeter. You're going to need a little bit of an extension and there are four little 10 millimeter nuts inside of here. Whoop. That look like that. So at this time, let's remove the rest of these and then we'll remove that piece of plastic. Now, when you go to put it back in, they are noted. So this is left for the driver's side and you'll also see an arrow that points towards the front of the car. So when you go to reinstall them, that way you'll know which one goes where. And once you've done that, you can just take it and just pull it down. You're gonna wanna grab the thread, so pull that down, put it in a safe place where you're not gonna step on it. Now on the driver's side only, there's a leveling sensor over here that you need to remove. So basically it has these four little tabs here and then it has a plastic clip on the top. So it's really hard for you to see. Basically, you want to try to release those, so just push them all in. All right, so we're gonna just very carefully try to get in here. Just wiggle a flathead, and you'll be able to pop it out. It's kind of a weird design. Um, and then when we go back to reinstall everything, don't forget to reconnect that. All right, so when you're looking under here, there are two bolts we need to loosen. So um, there's this one that holds the shock, and then this one holds to the knuckle. We're gonna start by loosening the front nut and bolt. Um, the nut over here is a 21 mil. And then the e torx is an E20. Keep in mind, these are crazy tight, so you might need some kind of breaker bar. And then we're going to loosen this one here. And this is an 18 and an 18. And again, these are typically pretty tight. I'm just going to use a helper here. Oh, much better. put it on the floor where I got it off. What I typically like to do is as I take a nut or bolt out, I like to lay it on the floor so I know which direction it goes. So you can see the e torx goes from back to front and the one that holds the strut in, the one that holds the shock in, goes from front to back. So next you're going to carefully disconnect this line here. And you're going to take a 16 millimeter over this nut here on your your end link, and then inside, you're going to need a T30 so that you can hold that steady. And then you can very carefully remove the nut from your end link. You can just take it, you might need to pull down on your sway bar, pull that out, and just so I don't lose the nut, I like to just thread it back like that. Now, as I said earlier, um, you do not need a lift to do this. It's actually a little bit easier um, to do it on the floor. 
but you should have a jack stand that's holding your car up. And then what you want to do is you want to take your jack and you want to put it right about here. You want to make sure that you don't put it on this little piece here that's connected to your knuckle um, because otherwise it's going to get in the way, especially when you go to um, reinstall. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to very carefully lift this up a little bit. And as you do it, your one bolt is going to come right out again, put it on the floor. So that one's in the back. The other one's going to be in the front, just so I remember which way they go. Um, the other one is definitely not loose yet. Um, this one takes a little while. So what you want to do, just make sure that you just jack it up ever so slightly. And then you can start to see if it's coming loose. So it's getting to a point where I can do it by hand. But again, just take it really slow. Okay. This one got to a point where we could pull it out. Um, when possible, I don't like to use a hammer or anything because you could damage the threads. Um, now what you want to do, is just very carefully lower this down. And just be careful because the spring is under a lot of pressure right now. Okay. Move this out of the way. Then what you're going to do, you're going to pull this down, pull your spring out. And that is how to remove the spring. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go grab the other spring and I'll show you how to reinstall it. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this top piece here, you're going to take it off and we're going to install it on our H&R spring. So what you do is you just line up the end right there, just like that. Make sure everything snaps into place just like that. Now, when you're installing springs, typically what the manufacturers will do is they'll have it so the writing is right side up. So if there's ever a question, does it go this way, does it go this way? Always put the writing right side up. Um, on the bottom here, I'm gonna take it out just so you can see it a little bit better. There's another rubber piece that looks like this. So you can either leave it on and put the spring on or you can just put it on like this. So basically I'm just gonna put it in, rotate it to the end. And then when you go to reinstall it, you wanna make sure that this little tab right here is sticking out this little hole. So you'll notice when I put it back in, we're gonna make sure that, that is guided in the right spot. So everything sits nice and there's no weird noises. Okay, so we're just gonna pull this down, push this up, make sure everything is lined up. So, I like to kind of see what's going on from underneath. All right, that looks pretty good. Um, and now what we're ready to do is jack everything back up. So again, make sure you stay away from this point right there. Go back. As you're jacking it up, you want to make sure that everything is lined up this way. So if you look from this angle here, if I was to keep going, I could hit that. So you typically have a little wiggle room. So as you start to put it back in place, just make sure that you wiggle it so that it's gonna go up and not get hung up. All right, so as you can see, my tab is in the correct location and I can start to jack this up a little bit more. Now, when you're jacking this up, the bolt that holds your shock in place, that one's really easy to get in. Um, it's pretty easy to see where it's gotta be. The one in the front is where people typically have problems because what they'll do is they'll get it to a point like this where it's not quite high enough and then they'll pull down on the brake caliper and say, hey, it's not lining up, what do I do? Well, what you need to do in that case is you just need to jack it up a little bit more. See, and as, as I jack it up a little bit more, you'll see that everything starts to just naturally line up a little bit better. But before we get that one in place, let's line up our strut. We're just gonna pop this guy through here. Just like that. Then we can work on the front one here. So it looks like I need to go a little bit higher. Get that in like that. 
come super close. So you can just kind of move the, the knuckle around, get it in place. So as you just saw, it didn't use any tools, didn't really have to thread it in or anything like that. It's, it's more about just making sure that um, that all of your suspension is in the correct location because otherwise, like I said, if you're jacking up under here and it's it's too low or too high, your angle's just a little bit off. But with these cars, there's a little wiggle room so you can push up and down on your knuckle and then everything will eventually line up. So just be careful with it. You don't wanna knock your car off the jack or off a lift or anything like that. But um, once you get everything lined up, it should go in pretty easy. All right, so what we're gonna do now, because there's essentially load on the suspension, we are going to tighten everything down and torque it. Uh, what we're gonna do for you is we're gonna put all the torque specs down in the description. Now, whenever you're tightening your suspension up, you wanna do it when it's basically at ride height, if possible. Um, it's not always possible to have it perfectly at ride height, but you wanna make sure that you have it so that it's flexed down so that when you're driving, um, you're not putting extra stress on, on any of these points. So with that, I'm gonna torque it down and then we'll move on to the next bolt. Okay, so now you can take your end link, put that in place. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by just snugging everything up. And then we'll torque it to spec and we'll again have that information for you down in the description in one spot. And you can take this and pop it back into place like that. We're still gonna list the torque specs down in the description for you. Um, but just so you have it, if you're just relying on the video, if you look right here, the bolt that holds your shock in right there, this gets torqued down to 100 Newton meters. Once you go to 100 Newton meters, you go an additional 90 degrees. Um, it's always a good idea to replace this nut and bolt. The bolt in the front here gets torqued down to 165 Newton meters plus 90 degrees of rotation. And then your end length is 56 Newton meters. Then you can take this sensor right there put that back through, make sure that everything clips back in. And then we're just gonna put the bottom plate on and these just get hand tight. And I don't think there's an actual torque spec for them. Probably, probably is, but it's something weird, probably like three Newton meters. Um, but yeah, so once we've done that, everything else is torqued down and ready to rock and we are ready to do the front. Again, this is gonna go up here. And then the other side is exactly the same. The only thing that the other side doesn't have is the other side doesn't have the extra um, leveling sensor. So you just have to do the end link, you do these two, and that's pretty much it. So it makes it super easy. At this point in the process, we're done the rear. Everything is torqued down and ready to go, and we are ready to move to the front. So for the front, I need the car significantly lower um, because I need to get to the top of the strut mounts and whatnot. So with that, I'm gonna put the car down pretty far and then we'll resume. So now what we're going to do is we are going to work on the front. So first thing you need to do is there's a little clip right here. You just twist this and then you can pull up and this whole thing comes off. We're just gonna set it over here for now. I love how simple that is. I know it's such a small thing, but we take these panels off so much on the F30s and F80s. Normally it's just, you know, three little 10 millimeter nuts, but to have no tools, one thing done, amazing. Good job, BMW. Uh, we need to get under here. So what I'd recommend doing is just take these little fasteners out. So you just pull out the middle. You can use a flathead screwdriver if you like, like this, just pop it up, pull it out. Looks like that. Trying to do this one-handed while holding a light. Okay, then you pull out the, the base of it. Looks like that. And there's another one of these little push pins right here. So again, just take out the middle like so. Then you can just lift this whole thing out. And I like to just connect these while I have them, just so I don't lose it. Then you can take this piece right here and you can just lift up. Now there are two more tabs right here. If you wanna take the whole thing off, you can. You don't have to, it's not really gonna make a difference. Uh, but what you will need at this point is you need an E12, which is an E-Torx. It's gonna look like that. And the way that this strut is held in to the top of the car is with these four E-Torx. So you'll notice there's four E-Torx. And when you go to line it up, there's a pin over here 
and there is a pin over here. So what we're gonna do now, we're just going to break these a little, little loose. Thank you. You don't actually need to remove anything yet. Fourth one. All right, cool. And then once they're all loose, um, typically what I'll do is I'm just gonna make that one a little looser. I'm gonna take three of them out and just leave one in to hold everything in place. And I'll show you why we're doing that in just a minute. So now what you're going to need, you're going to need a special tool. We're gonna have everything linked for you down below. Um, including the springs, this, and if you're interested in learning about how to work on cars and whatnot, we're also going to have some e-manuals um, where you can actually download service manuals. So if you ever wonder where we get torque specs and whatnot, that's our secret. Um, okay, so to do this, you're going to need this special socket, and what this allows you to do is it allows you to get an Allen key on the bolt in the inside here, which is going to hold it steady. And then what you can do is you can twist the nut off. Otherwise, when you go to twist the nut, um, typically what's gonna happen is the whole thing is gonna spin and nothing's really gonna happen. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to um, break this loose. Requires a little force. Ow. Make sure you don't punch any, uh, any little struts or anything like that. Um, we're not going to fully remove this at this time. It just makes it a little bit easier if you loosen it before we actually get it on the ground. Um, and also it's, with the socket you can only go, you know, a partial, I'll show you here. You can only go like, you know, about a half turn at a time, um, just because of how it's made. We have the other ones too that are where you go through, but these are, this is more common than what most people like to buy. All right, so right now it's pretty loose. We don't want to take it all the way off or anything. Um, we're going to leave it just like that. It's just going to make it a little bit easier when we're doing everything else on the ground. All right, so let's head into the wheel well. And we'll do the next part. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to disconnect these lines here. There's one there. There's one over here. There's one over here. Be very careful with these. You don't want to overextend any of the lines. There's one back here that you're not going to be able to see, but you'll be able to tell where it is. Um, this is gonna stay here because we're gonna take that entire bracket off. Um, but if you want to, you can disconnect it up there. It's not really gonna do much, so you don't need to, so we're not. Um, but we need to get the end link off. So this is a 16. I'd recommend one of these open-ended ratchets or open-ended wrenches with the, the ratchet on the other end. So we're gonna put that on loosen. And again, to make sure that this bolt isn't spinning, you're gonna need a T30, which is gonna sit inside there. And then what you're going to do is you are going to push up on your wrench and you're going to loosen this. And when you're doing this, you will have um, very limited room. So just keep that in mind. I'll see you in like a half hour. <laughs> Thread this off like so. All right, and then I'm going to push all of this straight again. Okay, and then what you wanna do is you wanna pull out your, um, your end link. If you've done the suspension on the other side, it might be a little bit tighter than normal. So if that happens, you just kinda pull down on your sway bar. Because secretly off camera, we did the other side first. Um, so that's why it was a little bit tighter. Okay, and we're just gonna thread that on there just so we don't lose it. All right, at this point, what we're going to do, we, there's a nut and a bolt that goes across here. So this is a 16 millimeter nut. And on the other side of it, um, which you don't really need to see, it's just an 18 millimeter bolt. So at this time, I'm gonna get my ratchet that I used for the end links. I'm gonna put that on this side. I'm gonna get an 18, on the other side. And I'm gonna break this free. Just 
All right, and we are at a point where this nut is pretty loose. So we're just gonna hand thread this off. And then once this is off, the bolt will effortlessly slide off like that. I'm just gonna put this like this. And then what I like to do is I like to put it on the ground in the correct orientation. So I remember if it goes front to back or back to front, this one goes front to back. Okay, so then what you can do, is just wiggle this off. And we're just gonna set this out of the way. Um, you should have plenty of space to, to do what you need to do with the rest of this at this point. So if you haven't worked on a BMW before, um, I'm gonna walk you through the process here. If you have, if you say maybe you've done this on an F30, F80, something like that, it's going to be exactly the same. Um, what I would recommend is before you get started, take some kind of penetrating oil and spray it around this area right there. And you wanna let that soak in just for one minute because what we need to do is we need to use what's called a spindle spreader tool, um, which is like this. And basically the way that this works is in the back here of the knuckle, there is a little slit. You're going to insert the spindle spreader tool where it's narrow and then you twist it 90 degrees and it spreads it. Um, if you don't have one of these, it's not really a huge deal. Um, it's gonna make it a little bit more difficult, but I've seen guys use pry bars and whatnot. Um, this just has much more control with a pry bar. You don't really know how much you're spreading it. Now we do have a full detailed video just specifically on how to use this tool. So if you want more detail than we're giving you today, be sure to see the link in the description and we'll have a full video on this and how to do this specific part. Um, but what we're going to do now, we are going to take this spindle spreader tool and I'm going to put it in the back here. I'm going to insert it into the back here and you take it, you rotate it 90 degrees um, I just pulled the ratchet off just to make sure we don't have any unnecessary tools in the back here. Um, sometimes what I like to do is I like to use two spindle spreader tools just to make sure that everything is nice and easy because like right now, if I wiggle this around, it's still super tight. So um, if you have a second one, it's a good idea that you use that as well. So let me put this one a little bit lower. Okay, with that, if I just wiggle this around, I can tell that it is definitely a lot looser than when I just had one in. So I'm just gonna put a little more lubricant down here. Um, and before you get started, you wanna take note of how far the strut sticks down past the actual knuckle. So I'm trying to get, it didn't really work, try to get an imprint on my hand. So it's basically about a half a finger length um, if, I, if I put my finger on the back. So you wanna make sure that you maybe take a picture of that or so to make sure that when you actually go to reinstall your strut that everything is fully inserted. The other thing I do wanna let you know, when you're removing and reinstalling, you don't wanna be twisting a whole bunch because on the back of the strut, which I'll show you in just a minute, there's a little notch and the little notch goes in this little groove. So you gotta make sure that you pull it straight out and what BMW does is to make sure that you have it incorrectly, they have it so it really only goes in one way. Um, but I've seen guys here and they get all frustrated because you know, they're trying to twist it left and right and it's not going, well, there's a little welded piece on there. All right, once you've done all that, we basically just need to take this one little sensor off, same thing we did in the back. This time it is just in the front. Um, if you don't take this off, you will rip it off when you go to lower the car down. Okay, so make sure that you remove that, just like that. And with that, we are ready to remove the strut from the knuckle, which is probably the most difficult part of this job. Um, what I recommend doing is having a jack below it ready to go. Um, I like to use a big rubber block. Make sure that you are not jacking up on the actual rotor or the dust shield. You wanna go right behind it. Um, I'm just gonna put it here for support so nothing drops. And I can control this a little bit better. Uh, but at this point, what you wanna do is basically just push down with your weight. And as you saw, it started to slide out a little bit. Um, I basically went until I hit my jack, which is okay. I just, I don't want to go too far. But what we're going to do now, I'm going to give a little chiropractic adjustment there. And then I'm going to remove that, uh, the, the bolt that's holding the top in. Remember, we just have one and it's, it's just finger tight right now. 
So I'm going to push down. Um, when you're doing this, you wanna make sure that you're pushing at the right angle. So sometimes you might need to push in a little bit before you push down, sometimes left, sometimes right. Um, you just have to feel you know, which angle everything is going in. So with that, all right, so what we're gonna do now, just be very careful with this part. You're just gonna push down again. Again, just make sure your angle's good. Okay, almost there. All right, there we go. All right, so at this point, this is very heavy. Um, you wanna make sure that you have a jack ready to take some of the weight off. So the weight's pretty much supported from there. Then I'm going to remove this bolt here. And if you have a second person, it obviously makes it a lot easier to do this, but we just wanted to show you that even though Zach is sitting right next to me, um, that you can do it with one person if, if that's all you have to work with. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna lower my jack just a little bit. I'll push down on this, take my strut out. Now the strut is uh, very heavy, so make sure that you're very careful with it. I'm gonna put this on the ground. And then I'm going to just jack this back up just to give it support and make sure that it's not resting on any lines. Now I know you couldn't really see behind, so I just wanted to show you here. So if you look in the top here, you can see my spindle spreader tool there. You'll see that I have one in the top and one in the bottom. You also see this little channel right there. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you look at the strut, you'll see this little peg. And that's what I was talking about. You gotta make sure that that's not getting hung up on anything. And when you go to reinstall it, that that gets inserted into that groove. The other thing you'll notice is that I don't have the spindle spreader tool fully inserted. That's because sometimes what can happen is you'll have the spindle spreader tool and it'll be in, and then you go to remove it and you end up hitting the peg and then it doesn't wanna go out. So um, again, just something to be very cautious of. The other thing you wanna be cautious of at this point, and a big reason why you wanna support it is your axle is right here. You wanna make sure that the CV joint doesn't pop apart. Um, and if it does, you just wanna very carefully just massage it back in, make sure that everything is in place because otherwise um, you will destroy an axle if you have extra. All right, so now that we have the strut off, we need to compress the spring. I highly recommend a spring compressor that looks like this. A lot of the ones have just little cheap clamps and um, they can be a little bit sketchy. This is by far the safest one we found and we've used it a ton and it is amazing. It's one of those tools you buy once. Um, if you don't feel like buying one just for one job, uh, a lot of auto parts stores will actually rent them. Sometimes they don't even charge you. So be sure to do that, be safe. Don't do anything crazy like take that nut off without compressing the spring because you'll get really hurt. Um, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna set this up over here and I need to compress it a little bit so we can get that nut all the way off. So make sure that everything is properly seated. And on my tool here, it's a 21 mil. If you are using one of these spring compressors, you never wanna use an impact on the nut here. You wanna go nice and slow. And basically, you wanna just take it to the point. You don't have to go as, as tight as it can go or anything. You wanna basically get it to the point where this can free spin. Um, that way you don't have a crazy amount of pressure on the spring. So if something was to slip off or something like that, you don't really have to worry about it. All right, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna use our little strut tool here and our, using a Torx bit. We're just gonna thread this off the rest of the way. And when you're going to take this off, just in case there is any extra pressure, don't point, don't stand on this side of it because if it does shoot off, if you don't have it as loose as you thought it you did, that's gonna go through your stomach. <laughs> now it suck. All right, so right now the nut is off. I'm gonna take the top part here. I'm gonna put it over there like so. And we're gonna pull the strut out. And then we are going to reuse this entire assembly here. So here's our bump stop. So if you didn't know for, especially on lowered cars, um, so your strut doesn't destroy your strut tower, it actually hits this, which acts as a cushion. Um, so what we're gonna do now, I'm going to decompress our spring here. 
so we don't have this under any unnecessary tension. And then we'll get the strut set up with the new spring. All right, so here is a side-by-side -side comparison. Sorry, we kind of forgot to do this for the rear. Um, but this is the OEM spring. This is the H&R Sport Spring. Um, not sure if we said it earlier, but if you have an X-Drive, you can typically only get it in sport. If you have a rear wheel drive car, you can do a super sport, which is a little bit more of a drop. So I'm just gonna put this over here. Then what I'm going to do, figure out which way is up. And we are going to compress this spring to get it ready to go on our strut. So now what we're going to do, we're going to reinstall the lower portion first. Um, the end of the spring here is going to go right there. So when we install this, make sure everything's out of the way. And that's twisted through like that. Then we're going to take our dust cover. We're going to put this back in. And same thing, look for the spot where it ends flat like that. We're going to put that there. So we'll take our bump stop. It's gonna go in here. And this is going to go on top of everything, like so. Okay. Then what you wanna do, I'm just gonna press the weight against myself for a second. get this threaded on a little bit. Okay. So now I'm going to release the tension from the spring compressor here. And we can take that off. Okay, just like that. Then what you want to do is take your dust shield and you're going to want to pull it down. this all the way down. Make sure that everything is well protected. Okay, so then what you need to do is you need to torque the nut down. It's always recommended that you use the new nut when you're doing this, but you're gonna torque it down to 71 Newton meters. Oh my gosh. It's very difficult to do. All right, so now that we've done that, let's get our new strut with our H&R lowering spring in place. And we'll keep going with the install. All right, so before we reinstall, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna put the top in and then we're gonna put the bottom in. You wanna make sure that this is twisted to a spot where these pegs are gonna go where they need to go. So make sure that you take a look. And when you look up, if you see the ones that are flat, this is where the, um, the ones go where there's going to be a bolt through it. So if you see this little, indentation right there, that's where the little pegs go. So you wanna just kinda of line one up. And then also, you wanna make sure that this little notch is going to line up in this crease right there. So a couple things you have to look out for, but um, anyway, let's get ready to install it. Make sure you have one of these in your hand. I'm gonna feed this up here, like so. All right, so I'm just gonna take one of my bolts, thread this in. Okay, and then once you've done that, you're gonna wanna lower your jack a little bit. And that's supported by the top. Again, make sure that your axles and everything go smooth. And you're gonna wanna push this down. Make sure that you line it up in the back, just like that. Start to get everything positioned. Um, if you're not exactly where you need to be, hold this with my knee, you can just twist it a little bit. Okay, we can check this out. I need to go like right there. That feels pretty good. Okay, and that went all the way in to where it needs to go. So that slid right in for me, which is nice. Now, to make sure that this doesn't fall out, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take out my, my spindle spreader tools. I got the 
one from the top. Let's see if I get this one out from the bottom. Okay, here's the one from the bottom. And then just to give it a little extra support while I get stuff tightened down, they shouldn't go anywhere at this point, but I'm just gonna put a little pressure underneath. Then what you can do, you can take your, your support bracket here, and this little piece here goes inside that little groove. Okay, just like that. And we're gonna take our bolt, beat it through, should go in with ease. Put the nut on. All right, so then the torque on this one is 60 Newton meters plus 180 degrees of rotation. It's always a good idea for you to replace this nut and bolt. And then we can take our little lines, we can put all these back. Okay, so we have this going here, that going there. And we got this one back here. And don't forget to don't forget to take your wrench off. Don't forget to reconnect this. My least favorite connection on the car. There we go. Okay, then we're gonna take our end link. It's gonna go through. You guessed it, right there. Okay, and before I tighten this, we're gonna go up top and we're gonna tighten all those bolts down. Okay, so then you can reinstall your your E12s here. And then what you're gonna do after you snug them up, these are gonna get torqued to 28 Newton meters, and then you do 90 degrees of rotation. Okay, so then what you're gonna do, you're gonna feed this in here, that's gonna pop down, and then just put in your two fasteners. So you have this one here, push it down, and then this one over here. So then we just have the end link, so now that that is completely supported by the top, we can get our jack out of the way here. And I'm just gonna twist this over so I can actually get access to our end link. <laughs> you get like one click at a time. Then you're gonna torque this nut down to 56 Newton meters. Um, once you get it snug enough, it's not gonna go anywhere, you can just use a regular socket. Okay, all right. We are good to go. So with that, we're done. All right, so now for the moment you've all been waiting for, how much did it drop? Well, let's find out. So according to my handy dandy post-it note here, it was 15 and three quarters from the center of the BMW roundel to the top of the fender here. Let's see, same spot. Look at that, just shy of 14 inches. It's like an inch and three quarter drop in the front. But look, that is a great gap. I mean, you'll definitely pass the shoe test. Um, but yeah, this looks incredible. I mean, before it looked like it had the four x four package. Um, now that we've seen how much it dropped in the front, let's check out the back. Okay, and according to my post-it note, the back was 15 inches. So let's see. All right, so like 13 and three quarter. So I think this looks fantastic. I don't think I would take a car like this lower than that anyway. Um, with the X drives, you really shouldn't go too, too crazy. But I think this is a great look, especially with these spacers on here. I don't know if you've seen our spacer video or not, but if not, we're gonna link it below. Spacers and lowering this car completely transform it. Here's some shots of before and after to show you the difference. So as you can see, for a couple hours of your time and a couple hundred bucks, these lowering springs from H&R completely transform the look of this car. And as we said, with the spacers, it just pulls the wheels out a little bit more. It looks absolutely incredible. So again, if you're interested in any of the parts or tools we use in today's video, be sure to see the links in the description. Once again, my name is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. And we'll see you in the next video.